Hey y'all, so I am back with my May favorites and hate it. Finally, this is probably the latest I've posted a favorites video in a while, but I still wanted to post one because I have some good stuff that I'm very excited to talk to you guys about. Um, and then also two skincare things that definitely did not work out for me. So May was definitely a month of highs and lows. I definitely took a break. Um, if you want to know more about that, then check out my Ready With Me. That should be the video right before this one. Um, but I got sick. It didn't feel very good. Wasn't super inspired. And then I went out of town for my best friend's wedding. But going back to to the like not feeling great and you know little kind of thing that means I didn't wear a ton of makeup this month honestly probably about half the month I just did sunscreen brows and mascara but with that said I was paying a lot more attention to my skin and oh my god it takes so much less time I know this is gonna sound so stupid but it really does save you a lot of time when you don't do like a full face I was able to get to work real early then I got to leave earlier it was all beautiful but Anyways, um, I have some makeup favorites, I have some skincare hate it, and some like random favorites, and it's just gonna be a good time. I love doing favorites videos, you guys seem to like my favorites videos too, so that's great. So, uh, you know, let's just do it. Let's get into it. Let's start with makeup. Now, this first favorite I want to talk about is a primer, and it kind of snuck in at the end of the month, but I really, really need to tell you guys about it because... It's about to be summer and this is the primer you're going to want if you live in a super, super hot climate where you're sweaty and nasty and gross. And it is the J1 Jelly Pack. It's a concentrated multifunctional primer gel. It's supposed to be a primer, hydrating, firming, smoothing, all in one. It's supposed to give you that like glass skin appearance, which is whatever. But really what it is, it's a good gripping primer. So the texture of it is super weird. It's like sticky but like not all at the same time, it's tacky, right? So you just need to work it into the skin. I usually just, you know, tap it in and then it starts to get a little bit easier to rub in. It's very cooling, kind of feels like water, but there's definitely some stick to it and it seriously holds onto your foundation and your powders and your blushes and everything you have on your face all freaking day. This was the primer I brought with me to Georgia because I knew it was going to be hotter than Hades, as my mama says, and uh, it was. It was like 99 degrees, 100% humidity, just like straight up hot, and my face stayed on the whole time. It was like magic. So if you are somebody who lives in a hot environment or you're going like vacationing somewhere where it's hot or something, I would definitely think of investing in a good gripping primer. This is the one I have. I really, really like it. Um, I think Cover FX has one too that people really like, but I can only speak to this one, but it's seriously, it's so good. I'm definitely going to be a staple for summer. Now, my next favorite will just go into complexion because I feel like that makes sense. You know, primer, foundation, whatever. So the foundation I've been really liking this month is the Revlon Photo Ready Candid. When I first started using it, I wasn't super sure. I think I did a review on it. And like at first it wasn't so great, but it wore better throughout the day. And I decided to bring it back out and put it back in rotation after watching, I think it was Samantha March. She was like raving about it or something. And I have been really, really liking it. It's been working really well with the humidity and everything. It's definitely more or less like a light to medium-ish kind of coverage, which is what I personally prefer for, you know, every day and just going to work and stuff. It has a natural finish, so it looks like your skin. It doesn't look like you are cake face or anything. And it wears well throughout the day. It has a pump. It's affordable. Really, it just checks all the boxes for me. And I've been really liking it. In case you're wondering, the color I have is 240 Natural Beige. Am I the only one who never reads the back of these? And then when you do, you're like, oh, so those are the claims. Hmm. So it says it's supposed to be medium buildable coverage. I would definitely say it's more like late to medium buildable. If you want to really like pack it on, it can be medium. But if you're looking for a ton of coverage, don't go for this one. Um, it has no harsh ingredients, anti-pollution, antioxidant, anti-blue light, and oil free. So that's cool. Really, I just like how it makes my skin look. And I like that it's affordable. And I like that it's in a pump. So it's like a win, win, win. Really, really like this. It's been my go-to so far this month. As for eyeshadows, I haven't been doing anything crazy with eyeshadows lately. Again, I like usually won't even wear eyeshadows, but when I do, I'm still reaching for my ColourPop Dream Street and Zodiac palettes. These are like my two favorites. My, my Dream Street palette is so disgusting. I'm about to hit pan on this shade and on this shade because they're my faves. Even this like red shade, we're getting a pretty good dent in. So I've been really liking that. And then of course my Zodiac palette. I like to use these together because this one gives it like a pop color and they just, they work all together. So you guys know, I love these. They're amazing. They're also affordable and 
they're just they're staples you know for highlighter I've been really liking my essence pure nude highlighter this is in the shade be my highlight and it's just like their original it's what four or five dollars at Ulta and it is so so pretty it's just a very simple very smooth light baked highlighter this is something that I feel like everybody probably has in their collection because it's so raved about it's like everybody's favorite drugstore highlight to me it's up there with like the wet n wild ones but those are more intense this is definitely more soft and more appropriate for every day are those days where you're not wearing a ton of makeup like I have been doing and it just gives a really really beautiful sheen you can also use this as eyeshadow it just swipe it on takes two seconds and it's just so pretty and it's just what I've been reaching for because again I haven't been going for much lately but this is like just enough. Okay, and my final makeup favorite is a lip gloss, which I feel like lip gloss is definitely here. Like, liquid lipsticks, who? We're here for the lip gloss. So I picked up the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm in the shade Fussy during the Sephora VIB sale, and I have been really, 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 really loving it. I have it on top of my lipstick now, and I just freaking adore this stuff. I like to use it on its own, under liner, under liner, over liner or over lipsticks. It's just such a good texture. It's a little bit of a thicker gloss, but it's not sticky and it doesn't feel like it's just going everywhere, which is nice. I'll add a little bit more just because, you know, more is more. It smells good. It smells like candy. And I really like this color in particular because it's a little bit more pink. I kind of want to get the universal shade. Is that what it's called? Just universal? I don't know what it's called. Just because I like this one so much, but I also feel like they're very similar, so like I don't necessarily need to, I just want to. But I really, really like this. And this one has little micro shimmers, so it makes your lips look extra shiny. And I just, I see the hype. I get it. I totally get it. I will say it's kind of pricey for a lip gloss. I want to say it's like $18. Um, but it is a good gloss. It definitely is. Even though I will say I was watching... Jen Loves Reviews live stream. Was it a live stream today? I think it was. And she was using a Milani, like a new Milani gloss that she was comparing to these. And that is probably like half the price. So maybe we can look into those together and see really if it's a dupe. But all in all, I've been really loving this gloss. Again, in the shade Fussy. So it's the more of a pink one. Um, but yeah, it's great. Okay, so let's move on into skincare. So first things first, I've been, did I include this in my last month's video? Maybe I did. But I'm still liking it if so. Um, and it's the Drunk Elephant Sai Sai. Uh, makeup Melting Butter Cleanser, and this is just their makeup removing balm, and I'm probably about like almost halfway through with this, which is sad because it's kind of pricey, but I will say this is such a good balm, especially if you're somebody with dry skin like myself. This one is just so rich and like oily but the oils and this is gonna sound bad the oils kind of like seep into your skin and kind of moisturizes it so when you wash the product off you don't feel like everything is gone your skin is left feeling nice and hydrated and plump but not dirty or greasy but just feels good after you remove it and after all of your makeup's removed I think it does a really really good job of removing your makeup too you can use it on your eyes as well sometimes I do that sometimes I don't just kind of like depends on how lazy I'm feeling that day um, and I also adore the fact that the little spoon comes right on top it's a magnet so you don't really have an excuse not to use it you don't have to dig your hands in there which I personally appreciate I'm really having deja vu right now I'm feeling like I talked to about this last month but it's been my makeup remover of choice lately and I'm still super super happy with this definitely would consider repurchasing it even though it is more pricey but what makes this one different than other cleansing balms I've used and you know I've used a lot is this one's just so much richer to my skin and I feel like it just leaves it happier which sounds stupid but it just leaves my skin feeling more cared for I guess so this one has definitely been a favorite and then I have two moisturizers that I've been really liking this month first one is the pixie phenomenal gel this has been my PM moisturizer yeah I've been using this at night and this is just a balancing and pH neutralizing gel it's a very simple moisturizer but it's left my skin very 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 happy and honestly I think this would be good for all skin types if you have more sensitive skin if you have more oily skin combo skin dry skin I think it's just going to do a good job of just like it says balance everything out and make everything more comfortable again so I've been really enjoying this and then the other moisturizer that I've been using which I know I'm using two different moisturizers that are very very similar I don't think you need both of these necessarily but they're both so different 
I feel like I need to mention them, and I like them both. Uh, but this one is from Laneige, and this is their Fresh Calming Mousse Moisturizer for Sensitive Skin. This is what I've been using in the morning, but honestly, it's moisturizing enough where I feel like I can get away with using it at night too. I did get this through Octoly, um, but I just thought it was super cool, and I like the fact that it's more of a calming one because I do have more sensitive, kind of easily irritated skin. Um, but this is really cool because it is literally like a mousse, so you just shake it up and then you take a little bit and when you think of a mousse moisturizer you might think it's a little bit more well not more you think of it or at least for me I think it's not gonna be as moisturizing and be a little bit more like airy and fluffy but no this one is definitely nice and rich and it's not necessarily creamy but whatever is inside of here is super moisturizing I don't know it's weird it's not the texture I was expecting but I like it you know, because it's actually moisturizing. I don't know. I was just super skeptical over a mousse moisturizer. But this definitely works for me. It doesn't have a fragrance, which is good. Um, and, yeah, feels good on the skin. So I like both of those moisturizers. And then my other skincare favorite is something I've been doing lately. I've been watching Mix Makeup. Is that what it's called? Mixed Makeup on YouTube. And Susan on that channel, she has a series where she reviews other people's skincare routines. Like celebrities and stuff that do like their routine on YouTube. If you haven't checked it out, you really, really should. I've been really liking those videos. But she's always talking about how she likes to use eye creams only in the morning because she doesn't feel like it's necessarily necessary at night since you're putting all this other stuff in your products do travel so it'll you know, it'll get there. But she feels like most eye creams really just help de-puff and help moisturize the area. And they're really ideal for before makeup. So I've been implementing that into my skincare routine. And I think it's actually really working for me because usually I have those little milia bumps right here. And I feel like those have definitely gone down since ceasing all of my eye cream use. Um, but the eye cream that I've been using in the morning now, right before makeup, is the Kiehl's Creamy Eye Treatment with Avocado. This one's definitely a favorite for a lot of people. This one's just the mini size, but you get plenty of product in here. And I've been keeping this in my makeup bag, and I just use it after I put on my SPF, and I just, you know, tap it in like you do. And I will say I wasn't the hugest fan of this eye cream before using it right before makeup, just because I feel like it wasn't moisturizing enough before bed, or it didn't like, I don't know, it didn't blend out enough. But I think this works really well under makeup because it's not super, like, greasy or anything. You don't put it on and think, whoa, I need to let this sink in. It's kind of like a lot right now. It just sinks right into the skin, and I think it works beautifully. So this has been a fave. Okay, now let's get into the random favorites. And the last physical favorite I have is the razor I've been using lately. I've been using this razor for probably like three months now. I keep meaning to talk about it, but I also keep forgetting to talk about it because it's just like in the shower, it's whatever. But this razor I've been really, really liking. It is... Like, I think it's just called the Flamingo Razor, and you can get these at Target, and i just been really digging it. It wasn't too expensive compared to other razors. It was comparable in price, but I really love how it looks. I'll admit, I like the color and stuff, but I really like how it feels in my hand. It's a little bit heavier, which is nice, and it has, like, a good grip to it. But why I really like it is because the creamy part is only at the top, and there's none of that stuff in front of the blade, so I feel like you get a better shave because you're not like coating your hair with whatever this moisturizing bar is, but you're still getting that soothing effect after because it works like that. You see what I mean? Like, yeah, you got it. So I've been really liking this razor. I really need to replace the head on this razor, so I apologize, but it's good stuff if you're in the market for a nice good razor. This one definitely is. Ooh, and I also really like the little doodad that it comes with to put on your shower wall that like holds it up because it actually holds it up and it's not like falling every two days, so. That's awesome. As for my other random favorites, I have been loving The Bachelorette so far. It started earlier this past month in May, and oh my god, love Hannah. I think she's going to be such a good, iconic Bachelorette, and I love that she's just kind of telling it as it is. So that is really, really cool. Let me know who you think is going to get the final rose. I'm between um, Jed and Peter. We'll see. No spoilers, please. Um, but yeah, I've been loving that. I've also been really into watching Survivor on um, Amazon Prime because they have the first like 20 couple seasons and I have been watching those nonstop. And it's so funny because whenever I watch those shows, I'm like, oh, I can totally do that. Like, 
easy. Meanwhile, I would literally die. So I don't think I'll be signing up anytime soon. Oh, and I've also been really liking um, The Amazing Race, even though I've missed the past two episodes, so I need to catch up. And again, that's another one of those shows where I'm like, oh yeah, me and my friend Liz would totally dominate, even though, like, she'd do good. I would just be like pipe girl, but anyways. And really, yeah, that's been like my life. I've been watching a lot of TV lately. Um, so those are, I guess, all of my favorites. Now, let's talk about the two hate it's. They're both skincare items, which is very unfortunate, but you know, some things just don't work out for you. So the first one is from Tula, which I have been so excited to try something from Tula. This is one of those social media heavy brands, but everybody seems to love it. And I got this purifying face cleanser in a FabFitFun box, and I was very excited because I love cleansers. Really wanted to try this brand. It was gonna be great and um, mm, not great. So it's more or less like a texture thing. So whenever I put it in my hands and started to rub it in, which keep in mind I'll do it on a wet face, I use this as my second cleanse um, and I'd be rubbing it in, the product just kind of like built up on itself and it got a little chunky and I didn't like that. So then I tried to like rub it into my face aggressively to get the chunks out because like a texture thing I did not like. And that's when I discovered that this is a foaming cleanser, which isn't my favorite just because um, foaming cleansers can typically be a little bit more harsh on the skin, wear away at your moisture barrier, and it's just like not always a good thing. Not saying that all foaming cleansers are like this, but in my experience most are, and this one definitely gave me that dry feeling after I washed it off. So I've uh, since used it, and I guess I can give it to a friend or something who maybe has a, a preference to foaming cleansers. I don't know. And then the other skincare item that did not work out for me, and I'm so disappointed because I was very excited. I also got this during the Sephora VIB sale. Lucky for me, I got it as a freebie. Um, but it's from Herbivore, and this is their Emerald Cannabis Sativa Hemp um, deep moisture glow oil and you guys know I do love a good facial oil and I was in the market for one so when I saw this one it was like a freebie I was like oh absolutely um, and it just made my skin very very angry whenever I use this I would wake up with a pimple which is always fantastic and once the pimples kept coming I ceased to use and it just didn't leave my skin feeling good it kind of burned it was kind of like hot so uh, yeah this is definitely a no go. And with that said, those are all my favorites and hateds for the month of May. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I know I've been flaky this month, so I apologize, but I think we're back. I think. We'll see. As always in these videos, in the comments down below, let me know what you've been loving this month. What has been like your holy grail of the month? I would love to know. And also let me know what videos you want to see over the summer because I have a few fun ideas, but you guys always have the best ideas. So if you have a good idea, let me know. Um, and also subscribe if you haven't already. That'd be cool. But yeah, I guess that's everything. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with me and I will see you guys next time. Bye.